the endocrine system is a collection of glands that are in charge of the production of hormones. These hormones are substances released by cells in those glands and they trigger different actions throughout our organism. Some of the major glands that are in our body are the hypothalamus, which is tightly related to the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands, the thymus, the adrenal glands, the pancreas, the testes and the ovaries, the kidneys and the placenta in substitution of the corpus luteus. And each of them produces a series of hormones that regulate different processes in our body. And now we're going to analyze them in depth. The hypothalamus releases its hormones to the posterior pituitary and some of them are in charge of the regulation of the anterior pituitary. For example, we have dopamine, which is a derivative of the amino acid tyrosine. Its principal function in the hypothalamus is to inhibit the release of prolactin from the anterior lobe of the pituitary. Then we have the retropin releasing hormone, uh, which stimulates uh, in the arterial lobe of the pituitary the release of thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, and prolactin. Then we have gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is a peptide hormone uh, whose secretion uh, at the onset of puberty triggers sexual development, and from then on it is essential for normal sexual physiology in both males and females. In both sexes, its secretion occurs in periodic pulses, usually occurring every one or two hours, and it stimulates the secretion of gonadotropins. And we also have the growth hormone releasing hormone, which stimulates uh, cells in the anterior lobe of the pituitary to secrete growth hormone. As for the pituitary gland, it can be divided into two different parts. The posterior lobe, which releases the hormones made by the hypothalamus, and the anterior lobe. In the posterior lobe, we find two principal hormones, which are oxytocin and the antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Oxytocin is a peptide that stimulates the contraction of the uterus and mammary gland cells. It is regulated by the nervous system. We also have the antidiuretic hormone, which is also called vasopressin, and it is a peptide that promotes retention of water in the kidneys and it is regulated by the balance of water and cells. And then we have the anterior lobe with the following hormones, which are the growth hormone, a protein that stimulates growth, especially in bones, and also stimulates metabolic functions. This hormone is regulated by the hypothalamic hormones. Prolactin, which stimulates milk production, and it is regulated by the hypothalamic hormones too. The follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, which is a protein that stimulates the production of ova and sperm, and it is regulated by hypothalamic hormones too. The luteinizing hormone stimulates ovaries and testes and it is regulated by the hypothalamic hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH is a protein that stimulates gland, thyroid gland and it is regulated by thyroxine in blood as well as by hypothalamic hormones. And, and at last we have adrenocorticotropic hormone which is a protein that stimulates adrenal cortex to secrete glucocorticoids. It is regulated by hypothalamic hormones and by glucocorticotropic. As we can see, almost well, all the hormones secreted by this uh, anterior lobe 
are controlled by the hypothalamic hormones. And now we also have the pars intermedia, which secretes a melanocyte stimulating hormone or MSH, which increases the skin and hair pigmentation. We also have the pineal gland, which is in charge of producing melatonin. This melatonin is an amine that is involved in the rhythmic activities. That could be daily or seasonal, like for example, adaptation to darkness or seasonal color changes. And it's also uh, important in some reproductive functions as it reduces the response to gonadotropin releasing hormone and it is regulated by light and dark cycles. The thyroid gland is in charge of the production of thyroxine and triodotyronin, which are amines that regulate the and maintain metabolic processes. They are regulated by TSH and it also secretes calcitonin, which is a peptide that lowers the level of blood calcium and it is regulated by calcium in blood. The parathyroid glands produce the parathyroid hormone or PTH, which is a peptide that raises the level of blood calcium and it is regulated by calcium in blood. The thymus is in charge of producing thymosin, which is a peptide that stimulates T cell development. The regulation of this hormone is still unknown. The adrenal glands are divided into two main parts, which are the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla, each of them secreting different types of hormones. In the adrenal cortex, we find the secretion of glucocorticoids, which are steroids that increase blood glucose, and they are regulated by ECTH. And we also have mineralocorticoids, as aldosterone, which promote the reabsorption of sodium and the excretion of potassium in kidneys. It is regulated by the level of potassium in blood. And in the adrenal medulla, we have epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are amines that increase blood glucose, metabolic activities, and constrict main blood vessels. They are regulated by the nervous system. The pancreas produces insulin, which uh, is protein that lowers blood glucose and it is regulated by glucose levels in blood. And it also secretes glucagon, which is the protein with the antagonist effect of insulin as it raises blood glucose and it is also regulated by the glucose levels in blood. Testes are in charge of the secretion of androgens, which are esters that support the sperm formation and they are in charge of the development and maintenance of male secondary sex characteristics. They are regulated by FSH and LH. Ovaries, on the other hand, produce estrogens, which are esterates that stimulate uterine lining growth and they are in charge of the development and maintenance of female secondary sex characteristics. They are regulated also with, by FSH and LH. And progesterone, which is an esterate that promotes uterine lining growth and it is regulated by FSH and LH. We also have the kidneys which are in charge of the secretion of renin that activates the renin angiotensin system by producing angiotensin 1 of angiotensinogen. Angiotensin, but this is produced in a non-direct way as it, the precursor is formed in the liver and the interaction of these precursors with renin is what ends up with the formation of angiotensin. And this hormone stimulates vasoconstriction and release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. And we also have the secretion of erythropoenin, 
that stimulates the production of red blood cells. We also have the placenta, which is a gland, transitory gland, that substitutes what the corpus luteum does during the first days and months of the pregnancy. It secretes estrogen, which prepares the uterus for labor, progesterone, which prevents the shedding of uterine lining, and human chorionic gonadotropin, which maintains progesterone production constant. Now we're going to see a general overview of the general relations that are maintained between some of the hormones that we've mentioned. As for example, we can see that hypothalamic hormones control the secretion of many other hormones as ECTH, TSH, FSH or, and LH, prolactin and growth hormone. And each of these mentioned hormones are in charge of controlling the secretion of others. For example, ECTH regulates the secretion of glucocorticoids, TSH controls terxin and triodotyronine production, and FSH and LH regulate the hormones produced by the ovaries and the testes. And here we have some of the references used for the making this presentation. And that is all. This was the general overview of the main glands of the endocrine system made by Anna Sanchez.